Hey guys, welcome back. Emily Jean, if you're new here. Today we are doing my April wrap up. So if you want to find out what I read in April, what I didn't read in April, and what I thought, grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your drink of choice, and let's get cozy. <music> Okay, April. I ended up reading six books in April. Wait, is that right? Yes, six books in April, which is awesome. My goal each month is three, so super happy to hit six. Let's start with my original TBR, what I thought that I was gonna read in April or what I kind of put out that I was gonna read. First on my original TBR was No Exit, which I did read, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> then the next one was They Both Die at the End, which I did not read. Then My Grandmother Sends Her Regards and Apologies, which I'm about halfway through. Then A Darker Shade of Magic, which I did not read. Succubus Studies, which is on my Kindle, and I did read that. And Thin Air, which is on my Kindle, and I did read that as well. So that is one, two, three out of six that I read from my original TBR. So that's pretty good. Why did I not read the other ones? I have something to blame. <laughs> I started each and every one of these and actually I'm really, really enjoying this book by Frederick Bachman. My grandmother sends her regards and her apologies. It is magical, it is sweet, it is heartwarming and I'm loving it, but no exit. Oh, no exit, you ruined me for April. <laughs> if you haven't seen my full review on this, I will link it below. Total five star, total thriller, amazing, amazing, amazing book and super fast paced. One thing I learned this month is if you think a fast paced book is gonna get you out of a reading slump, I might caution you that it could actually trigger a reading slump. <laughs> okay, so I, did, I didn't have a reading slump, but it made it more difficult to read these books that were not as fast paced because I was already in that like momentum. So No Exit was incredible, but it definitely made it a little bit more difficult to get into some of these, which for some reason felt a little bit slower paced. I mean, these two I only read a chapter or two, but my mind was craving something at that point after reading No Exit. Um, and this one, I only wanted to read during the daytime, which was really interesting. Does anybody find that they're drawn to different books during the daytime versus the nighttime? I don't know why. I never really noticed that before, but this is one that I want to read like on a Sunday morning with my coffee cup. Um, and I don't get a lot of daytime reading time these days. So this one has been slow going, but very, very much enjoying it. So let's see, I'm on chapter 17, which is about 156 pages into it. I'll definitely keep reading this. Um, so I think that's why I didn't read some of these other ones. <laughs> I blame you, no exit. You are worth it though. So what did I actually read in April? So I did read No Exit. Check out the full review. I'll link it in the description box below. I did read Succubus Studies, which I had wanted to read. It ended up being a five star and I bought the rest of the series. There are a ton of books. I think seven so far and she just released another one. This is by L.L. Frost. I have them all on my Kindle. You can buy them individual. She releases them as serials and then combines them together as the books once the serials are all released. So I have books one through seven, the complete serials, and then she did just release one more which I haven't gotten yet. I'll probably wait until I get through a couple more. But in April I read both Succubus Studies and Succubus Bargain, I think is what the second one is called. Let me double check. Oh, Succubus Bargain is the first one. Succubus Studies is the second one. They're by L.L. Frost, who I stalked on Facebook and told her she was one of my new favorite authors. <laughs> the first book was five stars. I love the characters. It's about this succubus named Addie who left. I, there's like this demon world. I think it's they refer to it as the dream world. 
And you're only supposed to leave it once you've learned enough as a demon. There's like this special demon language that you come to know and you're supposed to gather up enough strength and then you can come into your physical corporal form. And she left early. And so she's struggling with what it means to be a succubus who left early and trying to understand her abilities. And she also resists her abilities a little bit. And she doesn't want to feed off of humans in the typical way that succubi, succubi usually do. So she wants to start a bakery so that she can just um, siphon. That's not the word that they use, but it's kind of that idea. She can absorb the excess energy from humans who are enjoying eating sweet treats. So the pleasure that comes off of us when we're enjoying it, that's what she's going to use her succubus magic to siphon. But she comes to find out in the books, this is only like a little mini spoiler, that that's not going to be enough to fill her up. So she also like comes across these destruction demons and they end up being her roommates. So it's just fun. The characters are fun. They're super fast reads. So I got through the first two in that series. I gave the second one four stars and I'm going to do a full review on this series once I read all of the books. Um, I did give four stars to the second book. I would have given it five stars, but there was one scene that just, I could, it, it just sat with me really, really wrong. You can head over to my Goodreads to see my comment on that if you want to before I do my uh, full video review. There was just one scene that sat with me wrong, bumped it down to four stars, but I did almost stop reading altogether because of that scene. But I kept reading, and I'm glad I did. I'm still not over that scene yet, <laughs> but I'm going to continue reading because I love Addie so much, and I do understand that it it's different for Succubi. Um, this probably isn't making sense if you haven't read it, so I'm just going to stop there. Second book in the series got four stars. I'm definitely going to continue with it. Then I did listen to Death's Daughter by Amber Benson, if you haven't seen that review. <laughs> Definitely check it out. I'll link it below. This was two stars. Did not enjoy, but now I kind of love it because I was so annoyed by it so much. I did try to start listening to the second one and was like, no, I'm just, I'm not going to put myself through that. <laughs> so Death's Daughter, I listened to on audio. The next book that I did read was Thin Air by uh, Lisa Gray, and I had that on my Kindle. I gave that three stars. It's the Jessica Shaw thriller. Jessica Shaw is a private investigator. She gets this mysterious note about a missing girl from many, many years ago. And when she sees the picture of this missing girl, she recognizes it as herself. The premise is really good. It just didn't super draw me in. I ended up giving it three stars. The character is all right. Atmosphere is all right. There's like a little bit of intrigue. The writing's all right. But it's nothing that's going to make me want to read the rest in the Jessica Shaw series. Um, there were also a couple of logic things that really bumped me out character-wise. A couple of characters made decisions I just did not think went with their characters. I didn't think that it would go. It made... It needed, they needed to make these decisions for the story to be able to progress, but it didn't fit in with their character profile, I didn't think. So I ended up giving it three stars. It was an okay read, but I'm not going to read or pick up the rest of the Jessica Shaw uh, books. And then the final book that I read in April was Agnes at the End of the World. This is the first book that I read in two different ways. So I listened to the majority of it and then I had about four hours left and I was going to try to power through it at like two times speed. But with the narrator's voice, it just, it didn't work. I really liked the slower pace that she talked at. It went along well with the story. So I ran out of time. I checked out of the library. It got returned back and I really needed to finish it because I wanted to find out what happened. So I ended up getting a Kindle copy <laughs> so that I could finish the rest of the book. So I finished the last bit reading it through a physical copy. I think I'm going to try that more because it was really enjoyable. This one was really good. I actually originally thought that when I compiled it, it would be a three, but it ended up being a four stars. I can't quite put my finger on why I thought it was going to be a three. It was just like, I don't know if it was because No Exit was so good and Succubus Studies, Succubus Bargain I loved so much that then everything else seemed like just okay. <laughs> I don't know. I would still recommend Agnes at the End of the World if you want sort of this 
Well, let me tell you a little bit about the synopsis. So Agnes at the End of the World is about Agnes, who is a prophet. She comes to find out that she is a prophet. So she's got this beautiful connection to God. She has this connection to something called the prayer space. She can hear and understand um, the words of God or not. Yeah, God does speak to her but it's the sounds that I thought were really, really beautifully described. But she lives in this cult and she doesn't realize it's a cult at first until the whole rest of the world starts to fall apart. There is this crazy deadly virus that turns living things like bright red and they turn into like almost glass and then they want to infect everything else. So a little bit like zombies, but not zombies. And she has to come to terms with like the outside world realizing like that the prophet she thought was a prophet this was a cult all along and it's kind of how she gets through it and comes back so the premise is really interesting the characters were really great the writing was great um logic and enjoyment i did bump it down to a seven for both of those and i wanted to share a couple of notes that won't be spoilers but will maybe explain um why I bumped the logic down. Okay, so I already told you that she has access to this prayer space. We learned that pretty early on. And this is what's written on page 384. Reluctantly, Agnes shuts down. She'd come to love the prayer space's warmth and connection. She'd miss it if she died. She didn't know much about the afterlife, but she imagined you couldn't take your gifts with you just like you couldn't take your loves. This is a logic thing. If the prayer space is her connection to God, wouldn't the prayer space be the afterlife? It just seemed really weird that she thought that she would lose the access to the prayer space and she had this incredible faith about the afterlife. That just did not make sense to me. Um, and then another thing... Okay, so this is towards the end. This might be a spoiler, so if you want to skip ahead like 20 seconds. Agnes's mind worked quickly. Everything was about to change. A new prophet had been sent into her care, a prophet not of destruction as she herself had been, but of renovation. Agnes had wit witnessed the end of the world. This child would play a role in its rebirth. Agnes was not a prophet of destruction. She is literally what brought life back in. This does not make sense at all. She was not a prophet of destruction. She was prophet during a time of what you could see as destruction, but she was not a prophet of destruction. So just a couple of notes that were weird, four stars for me. I would definitely recommend if you like kind of end of the world, apocalyptic sort of things, and you're intrigued by the idea of like somebody um, holding on to their religion after they leave a cult, I thought was really interesting how she made it her own and held on to the pieces that had always been real and true for her. I thought was really, really beautifully written. Okay, so that's the six books that I did read in April. I also did start, like I said, my grandmother sends her regards and apologies. And then my son and I are reading Crenshaw by Christina Applegate, um, one chapter at night. So it takes a little while to get through those, but we're enjoying it so far. I also wanted to share a couple of other things that I just learned about reading this month. <laughs> so one, audiobooks are not quicker slash easier. I definitely had this judgmental idea that that audiobooks somehow let you read more books, um, but that's not true. <laughs> Agnes vs. the End of the World, there were like four plus hours left when it got returned back to my cloud library. Um, and when I read it, that the remainder of the book only took me maybe two hours to read the rest of it. So audiobooks definitely aren't quicker. I don't know where that preconceived notion of mine came from. Um, but they're not. So that was something nice that I learned. <laughs> uh, the second thing that I learned this month was that I love reading on my Kindle. It's, it's so much easier. I don't know why, but I love reading on my Kindle. I only ever used to read on my Kindle when I traveled and didn't want to bring a whole bunch of physical books with me, but now I'm obsessed. I want to read on all the time. I don't know if I'm a lazy reader, <laughs> but it's nice to just lean back and do like one little scroll and not have to hold up the weight of the book. I'm always going to love physical books, but it's been really enjoyable to be reading on my Kindle this month. 
And then the third thing I already shared was uh, careful with fast paced books, they might bump you into a slump or kind of put you off of the longer books that you want to read because you get into that like fast paced momentum. Okay, I think that's all for my April wrap up. Overall, I'm super happy. I found some awesome series that I'm excited about and can't wait to see what May brings. So thank you for hanging out for another video. Let me know what your favorite book was that you read in April, and hopefully I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye guys.